welcome to Monster Man. 2015. Yay! Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. We got our popcorn. We have our drive-in movie speakers. We've got movies on the screen. Because we're talking movies. We are doing our 2014 top 13 movies. 13 because we're spooky. 13, yes. We're spooky. We're spooky. <laughs> so what happened was, we both went through, in years past we've never really paid that much attention to the year the movie came out. We were just sort of like the movies we watched in a year. This year we focused more on stuff that was released in 2014. So it was Yeah, most of our list is... Probably ninety five percent this time, as opposed to last time. There's a couple that like it might have got released in two thousand thirteen at a festival, but like wide release. Like The Exorcist was that this year? That was last year. Oh, all right, all right, good. <laughs> the Eyes of Laura Mars was this year. <laughs> oh my god. So, what happened was in early December, I started to look through research what movies came out in 2014 because mm -hmm. I had an idea of what would be on a list but I was also like I don't know if that one came out too or too late or too early or whatever right while I was like researching it I would run into other places that had done lists and I started to see movies I'd never heard of before right yeah so that interweb is good in a couple of instances I went and watched the movies that I read about I and mean, they ended up on my list the other thing is you, while I was doing this, you, you published your list. Yeah, I have a book um, that I, first I keep track, that, it's the book that I keep track of all my Horror-tober movies. Ah. So every year I have all the movies I watch in October. And then I also, as I watch horror movies during the year, if, they're, if I think it's even worth ever being in consideration for best of the year, I write it down. So I had a idea. list of like, I think I had a list of like 20 movies that I could have picked from. That's not, I didn't watch just 20 horror movies, but it was the 20 that came out pretty much this year, a few last year, no, last year or the year before, now we're in 2015, uh, that I thought were any good, because I watched so much crap, it's ridiculous too. I tend to go through like our old episodes and see what we talked about and go, oh yeah, that was really good, that, was, that sucked. That's a good idea. The thing about this show is we're not focused on being current, so when Annabelle or Dracula Untold comes out, we don't like rush to the theater because we got to review it. And I would more... never rush to the theater for Dracula Untold. No. <laughs> Ever. Even if it was free. Yeah. Popcorn was free. Mm, popcorn. <laughs> so, what I found was like in October, I was really watching old movies. I watched all the old Hammer stuff. Yeah. So when I got to the end of this year, I'm like, wow, I did not see a lot of the movies that to choose from for 2014. So, I, I, my list has a disclaimer that says there's a bunch of movies I didn't see. When I saw your list, I was like, I didn't see that one, I didn't see that one, we'll go through it. Right. Um, but I was more concerned about, there's a, a couple of fringe, they may not quite be horror movies, but they have elements of horror, right. or horror fans love them, and they were on other horror guys' lists. And mm -hmm. I was more concerned about making sure people knew about these movies than worrying, oh, that's not 100% horror. No, yeah, and your list... Actually, you put a couple of movies on your list that, when I thought about it, I'm like, man, they should actually, I should have put them on my list, too. And I, you had movies I didn't see that I can't wait to see. Well, my list is so much better than your list. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. All right, so what are you reading? so busy. <laughs> 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 well, we, was a little, we took December off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, should we just, I'll read, you want me to read my list? You'll read, read your, your list, list and we'll, we'll uh, okay. This is going in order. I actually put mine in order. Um... And by the way, WordPress, thank you for screwing me because when I put this out, I wrote this long thing on every movie and WordPress lost the post. So then I was like, all right, well, they're going to get about two sentences for each movie, each movie. So this is one, number 13 was one that you and I watched after filming The Monster Men one day mm -hmm. because it had chicks and cheerleading outfits. All cheerleaders die, which I thought was definitely worthy of the list. Um, it was always... I knew it was going to be on. I just didn't know where it would be. There was a point this year where it was almost like number three. But thank God, the end of the year kind of, uh, because there was nothing in the first half of this year. No, it was slow. I was like, Oculus? All I have is Oculus and all cheerleaders die? Um, the second, uh, number 12, or the second one, Nurse 3D, 
which I thought was just absolutely sick, twisted fun, which actually came out in 2013, but I didn't see it until 2014, so... I saw it listed as 2014 somewhere. Yeah. Hey, so we'll take 214. I counted it, too. Yeah. yeah. The last uh, third of it is so bloody, it's off. It's just off the hook. Number 11, I put a mainstream Annabelle, which I went to the theater to see Annabelle. Uh, I'm holding off on commenting because I figured go through your list. Yeah. I'll go through mine, and then we'll talk about each movie. Exactly. Number 10 was Dead Snow 2, Dead vs. Red, which, I mean, awesome movie. I, sh I probably, when I think about it, I would probably move it up further now. But whatever. It made number 10. It's on the list. Number 9, of course, Alien Abduction. I could not put that on there. I had a choice this year between that and e Extraterrestrial by the Vicious Brothers, and I chose Alien Abduction because there were some parts of it that I liked. I think I figured something out about our taste in movies. <laughs> You're way more into Alien movies than oh, I am. Oh, it's ridiculous. I might be more into slasher movies than you are. Pro yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm all about abductions and probing. Because we talk about like the original Maniac. It was like, yeah, the movie wasn't that great. And I'm like, that's one of the greatest movies ever filmed. Right. Meanwhile, I'll watch Communion every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my number eight was As Above, So Below, which I saw in the theater, too, and I freaking love that movie. That was a lot of fun. Number seven, I looked high and low for this movie all year to find it. Uh, Willow Creek by Bobcat Goldthwait. It was really good. <laughs> Big good. Uh, <laughs> dug that. Number six, to me, the biggest surprise of the year, and there's a still from it back here, The Taking of Deborah Logan. It's a, a possession movie that was done well. Who knew that that could even be possible? Which is, And it's also a um, found, found footage kind of thing, so shocking. Number five, From Down Under. The Baba 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 Duke. Baba Duke. Baba Duke. Which, uh, I think there's a Kickstarter campaign to make a Baba Duke book, which I might contribute to. An anagram is when the same letters spell two different things. Right. Baba Duke is bad book. Oh! Which is, that movie is about a bad yeah, book. Bad book, definitely. A bad man. You're a bad man, Jerry. Number four, Ty West's uh, latest movie, got it up there, The Sacrament. Think, uh, Praise the Lord. If you want to get found footage inside Jonestown, that's uh, definitely what that was. Number three, another one that came out of the blue for me, Honeymoon. Loved Honeymoon. Jack says I do spoilers too much, so I'm not going to spoil this movie, but I loved it. Number two, and one I was really looking forward to, Cheap Thrills, which is freaking funny and sick and twisted. Uh, that was great. And my number one, Shocker, was a Bigfoot movie. Uh, by uh, the dude who did uh, Blair Witch Project, Eduardo Sanchez, exists was my number one this year for a very big reason. So those are my top 13. Now let's go to Back and Jack. What I loved about your list is I have not seen a lot of the movies on your list. Oh! So when I made my list, I had not seen a couple on yours, and we'll get to them when we talk about them in more detail. Right. Some of the ones that you said I still haven't seen, a couple I've seen would be on my list now if I had made the list today. Yeah, and I give a shout out if I saw Kevin Smith's Tusk in 2014, and if I saw that, no, 2015, if I saw it in 2014, it would have made But it, it came out in 2014, so yeah. it counts. It would have bumped all cheaters die, and I don't know where it would have ended up. So, well, Jack, let's do your list. Let me get Here, let me get you take that. I'll take the popcorn. Excellent. Time. All right, mine. It is movie time. First of all, let me just say, the best movie of the year that wasn't a horror movie is Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh my god! So just, if you haven't seen it, go see it. That's my Star Wars. Yeah. You go ahead. I'm just gonna... Alright, my right number here. 13 was the same exact as yours. All cheerleaders die. <laughs> uh, and we don't even collude on this. That's funny how we, we both we, came up with the same thing. And... There's a couple of things about my list. A few of these movies that maybe are the borderline not horror, if I was to swap out some of the horror I've seen since then mm -hmm. and, and replace those, then that would probably stay on. But if I added them without bumping those, like All Chews Dies would, would, would bump down. Right. But it's, it's a great Netflix. Oh, my God. And it harkens back to, like, the 80s. And it's so got a weird. bunch of like hot adult 
babes who play like high school chicks. It's like Buffy the Vampire Slayer on acid. Yes. So we can talk about that a little bit more in a second. Let me just get through the list. Taking of Deborah Logan, number 12. She's being taken right behind us. So, the, the beauty of us is I told him about this movie. He told me about Nurse 3D, which <laughs> is on my list a little bit higher. Um, so taking Deborah Logan, brilliant things done with a found footage movie. Yeah. Um, I threw the sacrament in at 11. Threw it in. Sorry, Ty. And for guys who knock found footage movies as often as we do, this was a great year for found footage movies. Yeah, I hate to admit it, but it was. Yeah. Um, uh, so De Deborah Logan, another one, I, uh, that in Sacrament and Deborah Logan, kind of like, there's so many bad horror movies you watch that when you get one that you're like, oh, that was pretty good. Like, its, va its value goes up because they're so rare. <laughs> the bar is set so low that if you see anything that just peeks its head over the bar, you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I found this. And some of the stuff that's on my list, it's because I'm like, this is a high quality piece of work. <laughs> right. So my number 10, Only Lovers Left Alive, that's the vampire movie with Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton. Right. Gorgeous. <laughs> she her looks change so much from movie to movie. Yeah. Slow paced movie. Very fresh take on vampires. Again, it's not the most horrific horror movie, but mm -hmm. it takes the vampire story of they lived for such a long time and they would have to change deal with changes in culture. The blood nowadays is like more tainted because of drugs and all this other stuff. All right. So finding like Good blood is really hard. They're bored that. with their existence. So, like, from a vampire yeah. story, I'm like, this is a really, like, original thing, so it's worth watching. And anything with Tom Hiddleston in it. I wanted so to see great. that, because somebody described it as the malaise of the modern-day vampire. Yes, that's... So, like I said, it's no. not... You're, you're not going to, like... You don't watch it and go, that's one of my top 13 movies of the year. But when you start to think about it and compare it to some other stuff, you're like, you know, if I think about... Original vampire movies, that's... Which is hard to do. Yeah. Nowadays. Tilda Swinton's in your next one. Oh, no, she's not. She's I coming up, She's coming yeah, up, yeah, yeah. pictures don't line up. This is the year of Tilda Swinton. For it me. is. Number nine, I watched right before I made this list. And I I don't... I've said this before. I don't know if I can say it's a good movie or not. Keep but it's, it is the most memorable movie you'll see. And there's going to be a cult classic. It's Tusk. The Kevin Smith... Uh, Human Centipede Walrus movie. People have compared me to Kevin Smith just in appearance and attitude <laughs> and view, and so I love anything he does, but this movie was so off the... I mean, it was so out of left field. It's crazy. And for those of you who are reluctant to see it because you're thinking, and I've talked to many people, go, oh, it's like a Human Centipede. It's not. It, you, it, there, for a moment, you think it could go that way, but it's not a torture porn uh kind of thing it's really really good it would make my top 10 if i had to redo my list we bang through these and then we'll just talk about each one the one that he's talking about the other tilda swinton movie it's one of these ones is a, a kind of a sci-fi adventure movie with a lot of horror undertones to it there's like a scene in the train when the lights are going on and off with the knives and oh my god all that. So good. snowpiercer chris evans captain america tilda swinton tilda swinton is awesome in this movie she's She's crazy. hideous and foul person. <laughs> Snowpiercer is about uh, the world tried to stop global warming and instead they plunged it into this ice age. And the only survivors are on this train that circles the globe. And the rich and privileged are in the front and the poor are living a crappy existence in the back. And mm -hmm. the back decides to take the front of the train and it's really good. You know what? I, it didn't make my list of horror movies, but it's actually one of the best movies I saw all last year. Again, if I had seen more, like, I'll say it right now. Cheap Thrills I had not seen. Mm -hmm. Cheap Thrills would be a, so high up on my list <laughs> if I had seen it before this. That if you wanted to say, okay, Snowpiercer's not quite a horror movie, I'd pull, I'd say you still see it, but... I like your logic. Snowpiercer would be on my list if I followed your logic. It's on so many horror guys' lists, so I was like, you know what? Here's one you put on that I, I forgot. 
I didn't write it down and I forgot it entirely. This one, if I remember correctly, I think it was like released, like this is the one that was released like at a festival or something in 2013, but its official release was in 14. Mm -hmm. So like whatever, it's close enough. Afflicted, another found footage movie, vampire movie. Tons of fun. I thought it's more fun than The Sacrament or Deborah Logan. It's cr it's crazy. It's a different, real different take on vampires because it's guys who are afflicted with the vampire gene. Yeah, okay, you sort of see it. somebody's journey from bit to vampire in a found footage movie. They're doing a video blog on their tour of Europe or something. Right. So it's the, the reason why the camera stays on is a little bit more acceptable than a lot of other movies. <laughs> Sad more. Uh, number six on my list is um, Aubrey Plaza from uh, Parks and Rec. Is in a horror comedy called uh, Life After Beth, where she is a girl who died. Her boyfriend's really upset, and then one day he goes over her parents' house, and she's there. Right. And she's come back, but slowly you find out that she's a zombie, and she's starting to descent into more of zombie likeness. It, look, for a person whose acting ability is best equated with the term apathy, I think making her a zombie is the best use of her skills. She does a great job in this. And what this <laughs> this movie has so many stars in it. John C. Riley, uh, Matthew, what's his name from Criminal Minds. The uh, is Molly Shannon in this? Yes, Molly Shannon. Uh, the girl from uh, all the singing, Anna Kendrick. Oh yeah, she's in it. Anne Pigeon from Forbidden World, is she in it? No, not Anne Pigeon. Anne Francis and Walter Pigeon. No. Uh, <laughs> I think, well, I know Walter Pigeon's dead. I don't know about Anne Francis. Well, there's tons of people in this movie, so as you watch it, you're like, wow, everybody is in this movie. I I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know, I put it on number six. I wasn't that concerned about where things eh, were. Yeah, after a while. I just thought it was... I, I think we both agree that 2014 wasn't a movie that, where a particular movie really knocked your socks off, so... Order, I think, meant less this year than normal years. For me, Life After Beth was more like, I saw Warm Bodies and I didn't really think much of that movie. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a better Zom Rom-Com. <laughs> Zom Rom-Com. Because <laughs> um, they play it really straight, but it's a funny movie. And a lot of the movies that I really liked were horror with a, like a comedy right. thread through them. The like next, one, next one, Housebound. This was one of the ones I discovered while trying to figure out what came out in 2014. This is uh, New Zealand. It, it's kind of like The Conjuring with Shaun of the Dead. That's like, a good it's combo. a horror comedy that this girl is like robbing ATMs and stuff, gets arrested, gets put under house arrest in her parents' house in the country. She's got like the bracelet, so she can't leave the house, mm -hmm. the ankle bracelet. But the house seems haunted. Yeah, you know what? That's on demand here. And I was thinking of watching it. It's great. You should definitely watch it. It's hilarious. It's got real tension to it. And it becomes a... There's supernatural stuff. There's a murder mystery thing going on. Oh, cool. I really... I was like, wow. So that... I saw that. And then I'm like, that's going to be really high up on my list. And then I had discovered another movie in my research called Shock Value. I watched that and I liked it even more. Wow. This is one that I think closest to sock knocking off really so this um which i had never heard of till i saw your list yeah like i said i didn't i did not learn about this movie till december wow so it's um horror movie director is driving home one night and he witnesses a guy murder a couple follows the guy home sees where he lives waits for the guy to go to work breaks into his house takes some of his knives and stuff and some photos Mm -hmm. Then like lures him out in public and then tells him basically, you're gonna be in my serial killer movie as a serial killer, <laughs> or I'm gonna turn you into the cops. There we go. And the guy's like, Black why do you want me in killer? the? You're like, you'll be more convincing as a serial killer. He's like, I can't even act. Because why would you? <laughs> his acting. His real motive is he wants to have the guy star in it, and then turn him in, and then his movie will star a real serial killer. And so he's his. We should do that. His plan is to betray the guy, but. It all goes to hell in the third act. Oh, maybe we should. So it's a, right. it's a, it's funny, but it's it's intense. And like I said, the third act is freaking awesome. Oh, cool! I love this movie. I, I, I gotta look for that now. Number three, you told me about this one, Nurse <laughs> 3D. I don't know if it's the most 
high quality movie I've ever seen, but that is what uh, entertaining horror movies are. Pause they look where there is nuts. <laughs> she is nuts. This movie becomes a bloodbath in the third act. That was my favorite to me because I liked the first two halves, and I'm like, oh, these are really good. But then when it got to the last, the, the last act, I was like, oh my god, the blood. It, it made it remind me of um, Dead Alive. Yeah. The amount of blood. I was like, this is now we've, we've gone to the obscene world. And like, this is one of those ones that when we were in high school, we would have been like, we gotta watch that again. We gotta watch that again. Boobies, blood, lesbians. Katrina Bowden from uh, 30 Rock. Oh my god. Ridiculous. Who I noticed would say, you can see my butt a lot in kind of like thongs, but that's all you're gonna see. And I mean, this movie sexes it up. I mean, so oh they're hot, there's a ton of blood, just a lot of fun. Yeah. The, 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 my top two are much more intense movies oh. Nightcrawler. Yeah. Which again, this is the Jake Gyllenhaal movie where he's a crime scene videographer, like for the news. Didn't you think he was, uh, like, had Asperger's or something? Like, there was something really off. He was socially awkward and very focused. And he was. Yeah. I thought he was like Sheldon Cooper with a really dark side. Yes. <laughs> there was something about him. He, he's like this loser who finds his groove, I'd say. Yeah. And he'll get to a crime scene, but then it's he's not above moving a body to get a better shot or manipulate. He'll manipulate people to get or the best. or taking some pretty extreme and morally questionable steps to getting the key footage and then blackmailing people. And I took a hot shower with a wire brush to my genitals when I saw this movie. And I don't think he got nominated. Icky. I don't think he did either, and he is one of the ickiest characters you will ever see in a movie. I didn't think he was phenomenal. He should be good. This is like I equated it to Heath Ledger's Joker. I'm mm -hmm. Like this was that performance that you're like, this guy's got chops. I think the movie made people so uncomfortable because it's not even an exact. I don't think it's much of a lie either, much of a tall tale. No. I I, yeah, I can picture the stuff really going on. Maybe Rene Russo's great too. Good to see Rene Russo come back. Who looks pretty damn good. She was Thor's mom. Yeah, but that was a supporting role. Here right. she was yeah, really she, acting chops. Here were real roles. Yeah, she, she's great in it. So I would say Nightcrawler is like, again, high quality film. This is like mainstream Oscar. And he can't teleport. I was shocked. Exactly. No bamf. Bamf. <laughs> um, Your number one. My number one was the Babadook. Babadook. Now again, this is not a movie I'm going to watch a million times. Oh God, no! You can't. But it's so well done. It's right. So because this movie, this let's, this is a perfect time. Let's talk about this one. Let's talk about your number one. The Babadook is about the boogeyman, right? So you see the trailer, and you're like, oh my God, this Freddy Krueger like, you know, coming out of a book thing. But this movie, the mother's, the father had died on the day that the kid was born. Right. The kid is a troubled high maintenance annoying kid that is just draining the mother well i also think that the mother has resentment towards him because in her mind i think she blames him for killing her husband yes so it's there's like, a whole there's a lack of a proper mother son bond too yeah there's she resents her kid she doesn't it's like i don't know she loves him but doesn't like him or right or something like there's a the survivor's guilt. There's this. So there comes a point in the movie where you're like, is this monster just a manifestation of her depression? Her angst? yeah, yeah. You don't know whether the Baba Duke is even real. And then there comes a point where you're sort of like on the mom's side for a while. Then she starts to kind of turn on the kid, right. and suddenly you're rooting for the kid. And this Baba Duke thing is a great, you know, they they pick and choose how to show it to you. He's Dr. Caligari. Yeah. I mean, he's straight or slash. up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or Slash. I think what makes this movie good is it's a monster movie. It's a, uh, it's a very dramatic movie. The, act, the woman who played the mother was nominated by Time Magazine as one of the best performances of the year, which to get a horror movie for that is great. Yeah. Um, and then it's just weird psychological drama where... I think a lot of people to are going to see this movie and not like it because they're going to expect... Well, they're going to think it's too quiet. They're going to think it's The Exorcist or Nightmare on Elm Street, even though The Exorcist may be quieter than people expect mm -hmm. until the big scenes. But this movie is definitely, the first half is quiet. Yeah. And then it gets strange. 
But don't go by the coming, because the coming traction makes it look like something completely different. Yes. Don't go by that. Just go by, go by us. We're yeah. telling you, go see it. So, I mean, I put it as my number one. Well, I will watch Nurse 3D <laughs> before I pop the Babadook back in. But if right. you said, what's a better movie? The Babadook's one of those ones that if you, you write horror, you read that, you're like, wow, this is a lot of great writing. There, there's this. a ton in there. And it was beautifully done and done with skill. Now, the reason I picked Exists as number one, it's a found footage movie. I get, I, almost every movie seems to be found footage this year. It's a Bigfoot movie that gives you a Bigfoot. Who would think? Not just like, you know, glimpses of a Bigfoot. That was my big thing with Willow Creek because I think the most you ever saw of Bigfoot was like a, a foot or a leg or something like that. Um, was the foot big at least? It was big it was and it was hairy. This was... Pissed off Bigfoot in living color. Like a Jack Link's commercial. Yeah. Now, I'm going to forgive them for stealing my concept from Swamp Monster Massacre, where boaters kill a baby Bigfoot, and then the other Bigfoots get pissed and start killing them. They do? They're not boaters. They hit it in a car, and then it leads to all this. I'm going to tell you, stopped. I saw this morning, I watched Honeymoon. And the two oh, movies I, I thought, I wanted to watch one before I got here off of your list. And so I was, I was looking at Exists or Honeymoon, and I, Jason Brandt had mentioned Honeymoon on Twitter the other mm -hmm. day, so I said, I'll watch Honeymoon, because two, the two of you were talking about it now. Right. And I, I enjoyed that, so if yeah. you jump to your list, Honeymoon, I forgot what number it was for you. Uh, three. Really good movie. Maybe they could have sped it up a little bit in the middle, but you, you sort of had to get to see the couple... As they are, when they first, when they first lovey dovey, then hot the, sex. There's a lot of smooching and cuddling Good and Lord. crotch grabbing going on in that movie. <laughs> a lot of crotch. The girl from uh, Game of Thrones is uh, all I kept thinking is, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Egret, you got a mind. Hot. She's uh, trying to tone down her accent in it. Yeah, it was kind of going in and out uh, during the movie. Um, but I can't tell you what it's about because Jack said not to. If you but read, I like it a lot for a reason. <laughs> you, you know, the, the great thing about it is, though, even though you sort of you learn what's going on, you never they don't fully explain everything. No, but you don't need to. You don't need to. You just sort of like, whoa, the, thir the third act of that movie is the is great. There's definite Cronenborg uh, body mod weird stuff going on towards the the last act. That's really good. The scene, the last scene with her and him on the boat, which I thought was priceless. I mean, there's great stuff in this movie. I actually felt watching this, but this this had, this, you could have written this. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was like... Yeah, there was a scene that I was like, it was funny because there's a scene in it on, with her on the bed and him. And I'm going, I just wrote a scene like that. Yeah. I was like, holy crap. So, I felt the kinship towards this movie. That's a, You're thinking the exact same thing. I read what he's talking about. And, <laughs> I'm like, this is Hunter Shea. He's going to go crazy for it. No wonder you love this movie. Exactly. So that was good. The other one on your list that I watched after uh, after I made my list was um, Cheap Thrills. Cheap Thrills was so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was what I'd heard about, and I was I kept waiting and waiting for the chance to watch it, and, man, was it worth it. So the dude from who's the uh, sportscaster from Anchorman. Mike Kettner or David Kettner. David Kettner. And from the office, and uh, Sarah Paxton, who's a freaking gorgeous girl from uh, the Innkeepers, and with the guy from the Sharpen. Innkeepers, that was the guy. The guy. Oh my God! You didn't realize that? No. Yeah, it's him. It's the guy from the Innkeepers and the kid from Dutch, who's now That's grown up was. and looks badass. So they're kind of like two down on the luck schmucks who meet up with David Koechner and uh, and uh, Aquamarine. <laughs> <laughs> in a bar, and kind of play this game of one-upsmanship where this they'll dare them and pay them if they do the dare. He clearly has a lot of money, so for, it starts off like 50 bucks whoever drinks that shot first. I'll give you 100 bucks if you go slap that waitress's ass. Right. And then it starts to escalate to its... Give me 1,000 bucks to shit in my, uh, my neighbor's house. Yeah, they go back to his house. <laughs> that, man, I'm telling you, that... that you are glued to that movie the whole time. Oh my god! And it's it's another again horror comedy. Yeah. 
Because it, it, it went, it rode that wave because it'd be really funny and it'd be really tense and you didn't know where it was going. And a lot like shock value, the, it's, they're not, it's not like a scary movie where they're doing gags. Right. The comedy comes from the situations and the conversation and people's reaction. Right. So in that movie, when they're like, you know, hold your breath, and then the other guy hits him. Oh, God, you cheated! Like, that's like real life stuff. It's like in shock value, there's a scene where when the guy's blackmailing him, uh, the, the guy, they're in a diner. Right. And it's like, he's like, well, I could just kill you with this fork right now. And the director guy's like, and see right there, that's a bad choice. You couldn't kill me with a fork. The knife is a much better choice. And then the guy just goes, I could kill you with this fork. <laughs> and Did Louis, you think of the Presidio with uh, Sean Clark? I could kick it out with my thumb. That's right. <laughs> I went to the bowling alley at the Presidio. Did you? In San Francisco. I've and driven by it. I had never gone There's a great golf course there, too. <laughs> As we digress. <laughs> so I did not see As Above, So Below. As Above, So Below is like, <laughs> just picture, like, uh, you're going to Rob Zombie's freaking Halloween extravaganza. And you're strapping yourself into a ride, and you're actually going to hell in the ride. Oh, cool. That's what it is. It's it's a trip through hell. It's a bad title. Well, because the title it's it it deals with uh, the philosopher's stone and magic and stuff like that and, um, and doorways to hell and stuff. And as above, so below, is to that particular phrasing is really closely tied to that. So there's a reason for it. Um, but it's good. If you're claustrophobic, you'll die. You will die in this movie because they're in the Paris catacombs, which are real, and. There are, situ there are tight situations where I'm not caught to quote, and I'm sitting there like with my popcorn, like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. Ultimately, there are things that are just dumb as hell, but you don't care at that point because you just you just let it ride. And there's some good jump scares. My own complaint is there were things that they set up early that they never went back to. I guess it's on the cutting room floor, uh. but it's really good. It's creepy. So you would suggest exists over Willow Creek, but you liked both of them. Yes. Yeah, Willow Creek is good when they get to the uh, the couple in the tent. Then there's that 20 minute. It's one of those just one shot thing. And I swear, I think they just exhausted them. Didn't tell them what they were going to do because it looked the reactions look real. Because there's stuff going all around outside the tent. So that that's what tense. makes the Blair Witch Project such a great movie. Is because again, you could go watch that movie and be like, eh. But when you think about the filmmaking process and how. Like when they're running out of the tent, it's, they had no idea what was going on. Right, exactly. So, in fact, you would think that that scene would be in the Exists movie. Yeah. The guy who guys. created that. Uh, that way well, they didn't it. go back to their well. It's interesting that Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> You'll tell. There's beginnings. Uh, the beginning when the, this couple's going through the town because they want to go to where the, fa the Paris and Gimlin footage was shot. And they're going into town. And they're in the actual town. And they're riffing on stuff, and it's funny as hell. Like, <laughs> to, to make, my, make me and my wife laugh out loud watching it means it was pretty funny. And you could tell that was Bobcat just kind of like throwing up lines. Again, that's what makes, the, that's the difference between a crappy movie and a great movie. It's like the authentic, real life. It's like the Marvel superhero movies are so great, because like Captain America Winter Soldier, pretty gritty, dark, <laughs> dark, dark movie. But there's a lot of really funny parts in that movie, too. Yeah. Like they just you, like anything in life, you go through terrible things and you try to laugh your way through it. But I did not see Dead Snow Two. Dead Snow Two is all. Did you see Dead Snow? Yes. All right. So Dead Snow Two is the Nazis are back, except this time they're going to fight resurrected Russian soldiers that they had killed in World War Two. Oh. And so it all culminates in this battle scene in this small town. <laughs> it's so absurd. It's getting it's, rave reviews. It's so fantastic. When I saw it on yours. I was like, oh, I gotta. The effects are good. The acting is good. It's drop dead funny when it needs to be. Funny. Is it in English or in? Uh... It's in English. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's you gotta watch that. I don't know if it's on. I don't think it's on Netflix, but you gotta catch that. We all like Nazis. And then you put Annabelle on the list. I put Annabelle on the list. Look, I know that stupid doll is nothing like the actual doll, the haunted doll or whatever. I put it on there because uh, there were some scenes in it that I thought were generally just freaking terrifying. The story was okay. Uh, you could tell they're trying to, like, you know, strike while the iron's hot with The Conjuring. Uh, but there were some scenes. There's a scene with the woman in the basement of the apartment building that are terrifying. And the demon. 
that show is ever one point. I'm like, well, if I saw that, I'd say, well, I'm dead. You don't even have to touch me. You just sit there and look at me. Leer at me from a corner, and I'm just going to die, and you don't have to expend any effort. That's good, because I've really written that off, so I'll check it out now. It, it's definitely worth it if you're just going to catch it on TV. You know what I mean? So it's good. And we did Nurse, and we did Old Cheerleaders Die. Old Cheerleaders Die is just a fun, stupid movie. <laughs> exactly. We were both watching that, and like, there's a couple of moments where you're like, what have I got myself into? And then, like, some stuff happens to like... Like, where is this movie going? Yeah, and it turns out it's a blast. It really reminded me of, like, the 80s Night of the Demons kind of And I would think era. Six Beers. If you're Six Beers in, you're going to really love it. And it's on Netflix, so mm -hmm. that was the funniest thing, because I, I read your list, but I didn't read your recaps. Right. And we both said, like, this is a perfect Netflix movie. <laughs> that was. and Deborah Logan's a Netflix movie. Yep. Like, that's why you should, there's so few good movies on Netflix for horror that don't, go watch those two. Yeah, because there's a lot of crap uh, on Netflix. And I would also, there's a movie, The Den. It's on Netflix, it came out last year. If you see The Den, it's really good. I've never even heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. That's a bonus, you know, from me to you. All right, so, is that it? I, I think we gave people enough movies to watch. Yeah. What do you think? Have you seen all of them? Or what are your favorite movies? Tell us. Yeah, what do we miss? I'm sure we missed something. In the comments, tell us. Because I know when I posted this list, a couple of people said, Why? You didn't include this and that? But yeah. I hadn't seen them, so. They could be on this year's list. We, we come in with our hands up. We didn't see everything. <laughs> that don't, that don't hurt me. So, instead of being mean, tell us, Oh, you should also check this out. Yeah. Hey, guys. Great list. Here's what you should also have on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good list. Yeah, I think so. That's that's comprehensive. I think Exists is the next one I'm going to watch it from your list. Beauty. you got to watch watch Shock Value first. Yes. Can I watch Shocker? With Shocker? Yes. Shock the Dudes of Wrath. Shocker. Shocker! Shocker! All right. With that, we will see you next time on... Monster Men. Grr, arg.